Welcome to the spoken tutorial on tokens in C and C++. In this tutorial, we will learn how to define and use tokens. We will do this with the help of an example. We will also see some common errors and their solutions. To record this tutorial, I am using Ubuntu Operating System version 11.10, GCC and G++ compiler version 4.6.1, Let's start with an introduction. Token is a generic word for data types, variables, constants, and identifiers. Let us start with our program. I have already typed the code on the editor. Let me open it. Note that our file name is tokens.c. In this program, we will initialize the variables and print their values. Let me explain the code now. This is our header file. This is our main function. Here, int is a keyword. The compiler knows the meaning of keywords. a is an integer variable. We have assigned a value of 2 to it. This is called initialization. If a value is not assigned to a variable, then it is called a declaration of the variable. Here, b is a constant. We have initialized b by assigning a value of 4 to it. The const keyword is used to create read-only variables. Let us switch back to our slides to know more about keywords and constants. Keywords have fixed meanings that cannot be changed. Keywords cannot be used as variable names. There are 32 keywords in C. To name some, auto, break, case, care, enum, extern, etc. Constants. Constants are fixed values. They do not change during the execution of a program. There are two types of constants, numeric constants and character constants. Now come back to our program. Here, float is a data type of variable c. We have assigned it a value of 1.5. Data type is a finite set of values along with a set of rules. Here, d is a variable. Care and single quotes suggest that we are dealing with a character. As a result, d is a character variable storing the value a. It is easy to see that int, double, float, and care are data types. a, c, and d are variables. Now come back to our slides. We will know more about data types and variables. Data types. Let us begin with the integer data type. It is declared as int. If we want to print an integer data type, we will use percent %d as a format specifier. Similarly, we will use float and percent %f for floating point numbers. For character data types, we will use care and percent %c. And for double data types, we will use double and percent %lf as a format specifier. Now, we will see the range of data types. The integer data type has a range of this. The floating point has a range of this. character has a range of this, and double has a range of this. The value stored in the variable must not be greater or less than this range. Now we will move on to variables. 
Variable is a data name. It may be used to store a data value. The values can change when the program runs. Before using a variable, it must be declared. We should try to give meaningful names to variables. Example, John, Marks, Sum, etc. Now we will move back to our program. Here, printf is the identifier name for this function. Come back to our slides. Let us learn about identifiers. Identifiers are user-defined names. An identifier consists of letters and digits. Both uppercase and lowercase letters are permitted. The first character must be a letter or underscore. Now, come back to our program. Here, we have initialized the variables and constants. Here, we print them. And this is our return statement. Now click on Save. Let's execute the program. Please open the terminal window by pressing Ctrl, Alt, and T keys simultaneously on your keyboard. To compile, type gcc space tokens.c space hyphen o space talk, then enter. To execute, type dot slash tok. The output is displayed. We can see that here we have six values after the decimal point. And here we have two values. Let us find out how this happened. Come back to our program. This is because we have percent point two f here. It denotes that we can print only two values after the decimal point. Suppose here I want an output with three decimal places. Let us replace percent point two f with percent point three f. Now click on save. Come back to our terminal. Compile as before. Execute as before. We see here three values after the decimal point. Now we will execute the same program in C++. Come back to our program. I will change a few things here. First press Shift, Control, and S key simultaneously on your keyboard. Now save the file with an extension .cpp and click on Save. Let's change the header file as iostream. Now include the using statement and click on save. Now replace the printf statement with the cout statement since we use the cout function to print a line in C++. Click on search for and replace text option. Type here printf opening parenthesis, and here in this column type c out and two opening angle brackets. Now click on replace all and click on close. We don't need the format specifier and backslash n. Let us delete them. Now delete the comma and type two opening angle brackets. Click on Save. Now delete the closing parentheses. Type two opening angle brackets again. And within the double quotes, type backslash n. Now click on Save. Let us execute the program. Come back to our terminal. To compile, type g++ space tokens dot cpp space hyphen o space TOK1. Here, we have TOK1 because we don't want to override the output parameter TOK for the file tokens.c. Now press enter. To execute, type dot slash TOK1. Press enter. The output is displayed. 
Now let us move on to some common errors which we can come across. Come back to our program. Suppose here I will reassign a new value to b as 8. Now click on save. Let us see what happens. Come back to our terminal. Let me clear the prompt. Now compile as before. We see an error at line number 7 in our tokens.cpp file. Assignment of read only variable b. Come back to our program. This is because b is a constant. Constants are fixed values. They do not change during the execution of the program. Hence, it is giving an error. Let us fix the error. Delete this. Click on Save. Let us execute again. Come back to our terminal. Compile as before. Execute as before. Yes, it is working. Now, we will see another common error. Switch back to our program. Suppose here I miss a single quotes. Click on Save. Let us execute. Come back to our terminal. Compile as before. We see an error at line number 9 in our tokens.cpp file. A was not declared in the scope. Come back to our program. This is because anything within the single quotes is considered as a character value. And here we have declared D as a character variable. Let us fix the error. Type single quotes at line number 9 here. Now click on Save. Let us execute. Come back to our terminal. Now compile as before. Execute as before. Yes, it is working. Now switch back to our slides. Let us summarize. In this tutorial, we learned data types like int, double, float, etc. Variables, for instance, int a equals 2. Identifiers like printf. And what is a constant? For instance, double const b equals 4. As an assignment, write a program to calculate the simple interest. Hint, principal rate time over 100. Watch the video available at the link shown below. It summarizes the Spoken Tutorial project. If you do not have good bandwidth, you can download and watch it. The Spoken Tutorial project team conducts workshops using Spoken Tutorials and gives certificates to those who pass an online test. For more details, please write to contact at spoken-tutorial.org. Spoken Tutorial Project is a part of the Talk to Your Teacher Project. It is supported by the National Mission on Education through ICT-MHRD, Government of India. More information on this mission is available at the link shown below. This is John Bonet at IIT Bombay signing off. Thank you for watching.